Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. I'm very excited about this. I love doing this. We are on the road today out in Lakeland where the famous Lakeland Antique Mall is. Now listen, this is one of the coolest places to shop for, you know, Disney antiques and, you know, stuff that was in the theme parks, but also records. They have some of the best record vendors I've ever seen anywhere, bar none. Some of the prices are a bit high. Now we're going a couple places, not just here, but I wanted to stop by here because I'm looking for the Country Bears Jamboree record. Now, you may know this, the Country Bear Jamboree attraction in Walt Disney World is shutting down. At the end of this month, so the record would be very desirable. Let's see if we can find it. Not everywhere you can find actual ride vehicles from Disney parks. That's incredible. And overall, this place is just amazing. It's like the best antique mall of all time. So, not gonna cover the whole place today. It's overwhelming, there's a lot to it. It's the best antique mall I've ever, ever, ever been to in my entire life. But there are some record vendors and uh, one of them specializes in Disney attraction records. So I want to stop by and look at that in just a minute, but why not stop and look at a couple other vendors in the meantime? So I'm going to do that. Then we are headed to the coast out to Tampa. If you don't know, Lakeland is sort of halfway between Tampa and Orlando. And we are heading out to Tampa to check out a record shop we have never been to. But I couldn't resist the temptation to stop by here. Now, because of our proximity to Disney World, you find things like these popcorn buckets from the parks. And I would say overall, there's more Disney merch here than you would find per capita at your regular antique place. I love these sort of vehicle toys. There's the parking lot tram. They still sell that or a version of it. Okay, I'm getting distracted very easily, so I need to focus. Trying to find that Country Bear record will probably be too expensive. I probably will not end up buying it, but I do want to check it out and see if they have it. I think I remember them having it. And it just so happens to be this vendor right here. Off to a very good start. By the way, have you picked up the new version of this? Oh, I don't have this. Now I do. Interesting gold records here. I think I've shown some of this stuff before. Look at this transcription disc down here. Very cool. 16 inch, which reminds me I need to get my 16 inch transcription records out of storage. Okay, so here are the Disney records that I was looking for. And as you can see, the prices are significant. So, that's cool. Disney songs, the Satchmo way. I love it. But I love the idea. Ooh, that's cool. 45 bucks. That's a lot of money. Um, attraction records are cool and fairly rare. I've got a couple and I would like to add more to the collection, but yeah. Oh, I had this as a kid going quackers. True Life Adventures, Mandalorian Season 2. I have this disc, very good. It's possible somebody come and, came and snatched that uh, Country Bears record because this is where I remember seeing it. Yeah, with that attraction shutting down, it's it's into refurbishment. So they're, gonna, they're redoing the soundtrack. It's not like it's completely going away. And for those of you in Disneyland who think, wasn't that closed years ago? Well, your guys' Country Bear Jamboree closed, I think, 2001, but ours still going strong. Fun fact, the one in Disneyland came after the one in Disney World, and they made it double-sized because the one out here was so popular, they wanted more throughput. Yeah, I think this record is gone. Some really cool ones. Though. A race from existence. Part of me feels good that the record wasn't there because now I don't feel tempted to come up with $55 to pay for it. 
because I have no business spending that much on any one record right now. That being said, I did pick up the, uh, the Patsy Cline record. I can't pass those up. Again, it's not that I don't have the songs or the music, but I don't have this release. So from a completist standpoint, it was a good ad. And 13 bucks, I think, is what I paid for it. Didn't even ask for a receipt. Did I look at the record to make sure it's in good condition? No. But that's a bad habit I have. Check this out, a freestanding vinyl shop. Don't see that too, too very much these days. Sound Exchange, and then over here has gotta be one of the largest looking thrift stores ever. Don't know if I'll have time to check that out, but we'll try. In the meantime, though, we're definitely gonna hit this place up. Sound Exchange, it's supposed to be a good one. So I apologize at the outset for having to do this voiceover after the fact, but filming in a record shop always, always, always is problematic because they're blasting music. And while fun while shopping, it's not so fun for uh, video creation or conducive to copyright laws on YouTube. So I apologize in advance because I know the voiceover after the fact is never as good as the one in real time. That being said, look at this place. It's insane. These console radios up here made me think about, you know, modern retro all-in-ones and how that as a form factor existed previously. And that's a very, very cool thing. And look at that very early shortwave radio back there. I was eyeballing this Tanberg 10-inch uh, reel-to-reel. Absolutely gorgeous. I think it was like $1,000, $1,500. I can't quite see there. Yeah, 1000 bucks. It was expensive. So I started off with the CDs. This place selection was off the chain. They had not just, you know, VHS and DVD and Blu-ray, but, you know, and CDs and vinyl, obviously. But as you will see, they had some interesting formats that you usually don't see put into a section at a record shop. So I went and looked for my favorites. I And I'll do a haul video at the end here so you can see what I got. But I wanted to spend some time looking for some more obscure things, like looking in spoken word, looking in more like miscellaneous categories. I always get this tunnel vision effect when I'm record shopping and I I after the fact I'm like oh crap I should have looked for this or I should have looked for that but I did spend time looking through all the soundtrack sections etc cetera, etc cetera. so this is one of those sections and areas I was so blown away by they actually have a reel-to-reel -reel album section and the prices were not bad everything as you can see here is very well laid out, very well labeled, very well categorized. And uh, I love the fact that they have dedicated artist sections. It's not just an alphabetical list or even worse, a genre list. They also have a seven inch single uh, section there. I was looking for, you know, picking up a picture disc. I didn't find any. They even have mini discs. When's the last time you saw, you know, mini discs for sale at a record shop? I don't see it that often. A lot of turntables, a lot of radios. The old Victrola we saw a minute ago. Cassette tapes. There was also an 8-track section that for some reason I didn't film. A Macho Man Randy Savage record, which is always... <laughs> that's so cool. I love that very much. I didn't end up getting it, but it is very, very cool. Of course, Funko Pops. And um, as I was saying in my original dialogue in this video, before it was so rudely interrupted by the copyrighted music... You know, Funko Pops have become sort of synonymous with record shops. I show a couple of them in this video, and you see them almost every time you go record shopping, and it's kind of fun. I collect them myself. I think they're really neat. And you got to love a record shop that has a weird section, literally labeled weird. Everybody working here was absolutely friendly. It was a great experience. So you'll have to forgive me if the picture and sound quality in this video isn't up to snuff, not using... The camera rig today, I was just shooting on the phone. So I came away with two bags and this contains records from two shops. I did get a record at the Lakeland Antique Mall and I did get more than one record at the record shop that we went to, the record exchange. And I will show that to you last. I did pick up some CDs as well. And you know how I'm, you know, when it comes to CDs. I love CDs, absolutely. I got some gems, good prices. I'll definitely share the prices that I paid for these with you guys. You guys let me know how I did. I'm always curious what you guys think. So I did pick this up. Uh, this is the box set of the first three Star Trek original series CDs. Volume is one, two, and three to the original Star Trek television, television series. And uh, I 
Don't ha didn't have any of these, so this is a great way to pick up all three. Uh, if you remember, sometime back I did get the three volume box set of the Next Generation CDs. Got a good deal on those. And you know, this $16.99, I think that's a good deal for three albums. It looks like it's sealed. I mean, I think that's a factory seal. It's a little bit looser than a shrink wrap seal. I'm not 100% sure if they are indeed new. I think they are. Um, but that being said, it says used, so I guess they are used. Um, but still, I think that that's a good deal, at least for what I was looking for. I wouldn't have paid much more than that, but for that price, yeah, I'll go for it. Next, I was very excited to find this. It's easy to see what I paid because it's right on the label there. Star Trek Episode Six: The Return of the Jedi soundtrack on CD. This is a pretty hard CD to find, and if you do find it uh, on places like eBay and, and things like that, it usually goes for a pretty penny. So I was excited to find this, and it's the two-disc set. As you can see, the jewel case. <laughs> the, the jewel case needs some attention, but if that's all that's wrong with it, then we're in good shape. Again. I'm terrible about checking discs for scratches in the store. Some stores won't let you. This store actually, I think they said on uh, the albums and even the CDs that they couldn't be open until purchase. I'm sure if you ask them at the front, you know, I wanna look at this before I buy it, they would let you. But yeah, $5 for this, absolutely a good deal. Sorry for the bird. He wants to contribute his two cents as per the usual. Next up, I picked up this Rosemary Clooney jazz singer. I love Rosemary Clooney's music and um, just wanted to kind of bulk up the collection on CD for $3. This is great. It's a Columbia Legacy release and obviously features more of her jazz-oriented tunes. A couple more to go, the CDs. This one is new and what a deal for a new CD, $3.99. I'll explain why it's as cheap as it is in a minute. But yeah, Rosemary sings her wonderful songs. It's a greatest hits album. I love it when CDs came with, because, you know, largely this just doesn't happen anymore. But the jewel case in the box, I think that was cool packaging. And again, this is just greatest hits stuff. And the reason why it is a, you know, they say if it's too good to be true, it probably is. It's, a, it's an European Union import, I believe. Yeah. And so... You know, this is a third, we'll call it a third party release. Hopefully it's a good one though. So that's why a new CD is only $3.99 in this case. And then finally for CDs, stay tuned for records. Always on the lookout for Disney soundtracks, especially attractions. I didn't get any attraction stuff today, unfortunately. But, you know, the key movies, you know, those canon movies of the Walt Disney Animation Archives and even Pixar Archives, I'll pick those up all day. So this is The Lion King for $4. It is used, but obviously this is amazing music. Speaks for itself. Absolutely beautiful music. And I'm glad to have it. Did you know Hans Zimmer did this score? Okay, moving on to the record. This one is probably the most surprising deal I got. Four ninety nine. dollars for a Walt Disney picture disc, Pocahontas, songs from all these Disney picture discs, which is, you know, when it comes to records, Disney's not releasing a whole lot more than this and certain, you know, deluxe commemorative editions of things. These are kind of like the bread and butter for Disney records in a weird way, but they feature songs from. In other words, it's not a full-blown soundtrack. There's less music on here than there is on the CD, but $4.99. $4.99, but warped, sold as is, decoration only. So is it too warped to play, or will it play, or did I just spend $5 on a decorative disc? Time will tell. It doesn't seem too warped, but yeah, time will tell. I like how they give the information on there. I think that that is really good. So that could be a good deal, depending on what condition it truly is in. Next up, High Society. This is a fantastic, fantastic soundtrack. After I got in the car, which by the way, it's a good couple of hours back from Tampa, back to Orlando, $3.99 for this. I got to thinking, do I have this? Definitely don't have it on record. I have this feeling that I have it on reel-to-reel -reel tape, but I'm not 100% sure. Actually, I don't think I have this. 
more I think about it. But this is great, excellent music. Bing Crosby, Grace Kelly, Frank Sinatra in the film. And uh, some great, great songs on here. If you like Sinatra, you like Bing Crosby, some absolutely fantastic tunes. And then finally, this one you guys know, because in the video you can see me grabbing it. I picked this up at the Lakeland Antique Mall. Patsy Klein today, tomorrow, and forever. This is not a title you see very often. This is an 80s um, MCA release. So it's got sort of that funky retro styling that MCA was doing with their Patsy Klein stuff in the late 80s. So yeah, I was glad to get this. Can't wait to give it uh, a listen. And that is the haul. So as always, what did I pass up that I shouldn't have passed up? What do you guys think? Have you been record hunting lately? What are your finds and what are you guys looking for? But my friends, that's going to do it for today. So happy record hunting and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.